Greetings everyone, my name is Jonathan Bailey, usual information about me below. Uh, today, I don't know what I'm going to say. I'm really and truly just hitting record and talking off the cuff on this one. Usually I have some planned in mind. Um, the reason is because I don't know what to say. There's been a lot going on in the last, I'd say, 24 or 48 hours um, up in Canada, specifically revolving around a columnist named Margaret Winty. Now, Margaret Winty is not very well known here in the States where I'm from, uh, but she is very well known in Canada. She is a conservative columnist, writes three times a week for Canada's largest newspaper, The Globe and Mail. And as an American, I feel like I have some problems really talking about this because, you know, um, I don't know all these papers involved or these columnists, so I'm kind of struggling here. So I want to say this, and you go back, I'll put the link in the, com in the description, but I have um, wrote an article on it yesterday. Please, if there are any inaccuracies or any problems with it, let me know. Email me, leave me a comment, tweet me. Put it on the Facebook page, whatever. I don't care. Let me know. But I've been getting a lot of a, um, people saying, "Hey, you're just wrong on this, and you're, you're just wrong. You you don't know what you're talking about." But not actually pointing to anything specific I said. And you know, I don't know if these are just Winty supporters who are mad at me because I'm, you know, calling out the paper on this, or if this is just you know I actually said something wrong. So if I did say something wrong or there are mistakes, let me know. I'm more than happy to correct it. In fact, I'm going to be updating it probably right after I finish recording this video. But anyways, the basics of this is that there is a uh, professor by the name of Carol Wanio, or I'm, not, I'm pretty sure that's how you say it, um, who has a blog where she pretty much works on calling out Winty's work, accusing her of all kinds of unethical uh, acts. And normally the accusations aren't very impressive. I'm going to admit I read through a few of her entries. Most of the time doesn't actually say anything of t terrible value, but on the 18th, she covered a 2009 piece by Winty that um, turns out there was actually serious content reuse purposes in it. She was uh, reusing a lot of text without proper quotes or proper citations. And yeah, it was pretty ugly. Well, anyways, scandal took some time, boiled up. And the result of it was that the Globe and Mail, their uh, public editor, Stacy Steed's her name, um, sort of posted saying that she had investigated the matter, she had looked into it, and she didn't. She posted a footnote correction about one of the quotes which was misused, and that was going to be the end of it. That was all she was going to do. That was the matter. It was a totally resolved issue, and that did not make a lot of people happy, as it turned out. A lot of people were very upset by that. They felt it was an inadequate, incomplete response. And so the update today is that... Uh, the Globe and Mail has sort of bounced back and said that they have disciplined uh, Winty. They did not say how. In fact, the details of her discipline have been kept secret. So it could, for all we know, be a, a stern talking to, and you know, a uh, and a loss of five minutes of pay or something. I don't know. It could be nothing realistically. So, and they've also announced, and this is the good news here, um, that. Uh, the public editor, Steve, uh, Steve, will no longer be reporting to the newsroom, but will be reporting to the publisher, so she is completely independent of the newsroom. That's a good thing for reasons we'll discuss in just a minute. Uh, but what really grates me is that Winty posted a response. And in that response, she said, uh, well, first she took some time to attack Wainio and um, saying they you know she's been attacking me and da-da-da, she's just someone with an axe to grind. But she did say that she could have done better on this article in 2009, but that she's not a serial plagiarist. But here's a quote that bothers me, and I'm going to read it to you word for word. Uh, Journalistic practice around quotations and attribution have become far more cautious in the past few years, and mine has too. Um, if I were writing that column again today, I would quote and attribute it more carefully. The column in question was from 2009, three years ago. I have some bad news, Winty. There's been no tectonic shift that would make this okay in 2009, but not okay today. There's nothing like that. The last major shift in journalism ethics that took place was actually in 2003 with the Jason Blair scandal at the New York Times. That is what brought about the position of the public editor. Uh, basically, the public editor, for those who don't know, is sort of like an ombudsman, sort of a liaison between the public and the newsroom, and they're supposed to work independently from the newsroom, uh, but in Steed's case, apparently she wasn't. I mean, I don't know why you even have a public editor if she can't represent the public, but that's a completely separate question. Um, the point being, 
um, Steed was not able to do her job effectively in this case. And but it, this quote disturbs me though because there has been no serious shift. Now I will admit, for Wendy's purpose, she's been running for twenty years. There has been a trend, a slow trend, um, over the over those two decades. But in the last three years, no, the standards have been pretty much the same for the last ten for the last ten years or so. Uh, since, like I said, 2003 definitely was the last time there was a big wake-up call in the industry. So in 2009, when this article was written, this still was unacceptable. And she's ducking the issue. She's saying, oh, that they're just you know, making, taking light of something that we did back in the day. Like, 2009 was so long ago. Not in terms of journalism ethics. And I say that because I have a journalism degree. This is true. Bachelor's in Journalism and Mass Communication, University of South Carolina. Graduated 2002. And this type of stuff was not acceptable in my law and ethics class in 1999 and 2000. It just wasn't. We actually discussed reusing these types of quotes and this type of material, how to cite quotes and all that. This was not acceptable. What Winty did in that column was not acceptable back then when I was in college. So, no. Uh, that's not a valid excuse, Winty. I'm sorry. And the other allegations going back to 2008 and so forth raise other issues. And the fact of the matter is the Globe and Mail needs to do what CNN and Time, and Time Warner basically did with Fareed Zakaria. Suspend her, take a moment, really investigate her work. And if she's clean and if this is the only incident, fine, bring her back. And you know, just rest assured that you did your best and that you checked in things thoroughly. These actions are... They at least give the appearance of trying to cover it up. CNN, many people said they overreacted to it, but at the very least, they didn't appear like they were trying to hide anything or cover it up. And that's what the Globe and Mail is doing. And by doing that, by giving that appearance, they are actually doing more to hurt Winty by dragging the scandal out. And they are hurting their own paper, too, by making them appear to be soft on suspected plagiarists. So it's a terrible approach they're taking to this. And I really, really hope that they start to take this seriously, because here's what's going to happen. Right now, as I'm speaking, you know there are dozens, if not hundreds of people right now going through Winty's work. And if any of them find anything, it's going to get ugly fast. So there's a storm coming here if there is anything else in her history. And I guess we'll see if there is or there isn't. But I think it would sound a lot better coming from the Globe and Mail than it will coming from Joe Schmo Blogger. Something to think about. Well, anyways, everyone, thank you very much, and until tomorrow, this is Jonathan Bailey, signing off.